I'm gonna start my video with a simple announcement and that is I got my first strike on YouTube yeah so what happened is that I had a video about showcasing phishing TTPs and how easy it is for someone to go ahead and create a phishing attack of course I did that for educational purposes of course I did that in my own lab environment but YouTube decided to flag that as malicious and against their term of service now since it was my first let's say strike it was just a warning but i am afraid of that thing happening in future and i need to think about from in what direction to move my channel and to upload videos now for that i guys need need your help and i would highly appreciate your feedback into explaining what you want to see more of that of that channel and what you work that channel to to go into to that path I highly appreciate your feedback and while you are doing that I'm going to be busy going through YouTube's terms and conditions and determining what I can and cannot upload to YouTube and what they can count as abusive or malicious. Now with that being said, thank you for your attention and let's move right into the video. Guys, welcome back and we can see a massive hype of C2 frameworks. Now, we can see Sphere, we can see Havoc, a lot of threat actors are using this kind of C2 and that made me thinking, what about the old ones? Are they really forgotten? Or are they still useful and can do the job nice? So I decided to pick at Mythic once again and we're not gonna go through the installation and setup process. I already have a video about that, you can find it on that corner right here. And now we're gonna dive into a, what's so called Athena agent, which is a kind of new one. So if you Google Mythic C2 Athena agent, we can see that the last commit is, was from like five months ago, which is kind of new, which means that this thing is currently being supported and developed. Now Athena is based on .NET Core 6, which is extremely handy and it's platform independent. It can run on multiple operational systems and so on. And I decided to give it a go. So let's see how that thing behaves and is it really worth it? I did is to perform several tests. The first one is being how the actual agent is being shipped. Does it support only executable format? Can we generate a shell code which we can further customize? Or can we get the actual source code of the agent for greater customizability? The second test would be how that thing really works and of course if it works in the first place. The third test is going to be if it bypasses Windows Defender and the final test would be does it have any differences in terms of functionality if Defender is being on? Of course, if the third test is being successful. Now we had a lot of talk about a lot of tests, so let's dive right into it. Start by first generating a payload. That can be done from this option right here, payloads, and then we can click on the right corner action and generate a new payload. If you don't have Athena installed, it's as simple as going to your mythic CLI directory there and running that command as a sudo. It's gonna pull all the container it needs, it's gonna install all it needs. Of course you may need to reboot the mythic instance, but that's fine. Then after that's been done, you're gonna have that agent being here, Athena. Alright. Now into the payloads, go into actions, generate new payload, and now let's specify Windows. So that. Click next and choose Athena. Now we want an EXE, we can play around with a with bunch of options but we're gonna stick to, to as default as possible. Now I'm just gonna go and click next. And now here's the first problem with that uh, let's say agent because I am not able to customize my commands. For instance if you go to let's say uh, Apple agent which is the, the default one for Mythic, so the most known one at least, you can go to next and you can specify which commands you want and based on that it's going to generate an executable, right? But with Athena, the things are different and I am not sure why. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, maybe I'm doing something wrong with the configuration, but it's different. So on Athena, I can click next and I have a bunch of commands which I can't remove or can't add. So the commands I have is download, we can download files, execute assembly, that's nice and that's maybe one of the most in, let's say interesting for us we have exit of course with the the job sleeps make socks proxy and upload files and that's it i mean there's nothing much to it we have all of commands we unfortunately we can't add so i guess we just click next and then specify the http profile of course if you don't know what that is just make sure to hit that video 
on the description below and yeah so here is pretty much how the the beacon is gonna connect to us and in that case it's gonna be through http now we need to modify the callback server which is gonna be my eat oip which is that is that let's set the the callback to five because we want to be more quick and click next now this is going to generate a zip file and let's see what's in, inside that zip file i'm just going to first make sure that there's nothing in my downloads there is so i'm going to remove athena.zip all right i'm going to do i have config again and http server now let's generate that let's wait a little bit and it should be fine if you see an error here in the payroll generation section make sure to first restart the athena container or a second restart the mythic instance that should be fine now we have that payload ready let's download that we have athena.zip and let's ship it to my windows 10 client now it's a simple windows 10 i'm not sure what version it is so let's do it where it's uh 21 h1 so it's kind of new then let's go with my callback IP and download the zip file. Now, let's first make sure that the Defender is being off. Yeah, it is. Now let's download that, open that up, extract everything here, and we can see an executable. So that's a standard form of Athena, which generates an executable. So let's test what else it can generate. If I go to payloads, action, generate new payload, windows, Athena, and I have two options. First one is being for executable as we did now. And the second one is for the source code. So we don't have an option for injecting it into a shell code. Actually, I'm not sure if there is not a shell code in the side of source code. But I'm thinking of making a stream of trying to go through the source code, debug it, see how it works, and see if we can modify it to make it better or not. So I'm going to leave that for uh, next episode. And we have two options using Athena. Exe, source code, and now we're going to stick to Exe to see how that thing really works. So back to my Windows 10 client. Now I'm here and let's just execute that. Double click. We saw a flash window. It disappeared. It should have started the process and we can confirm that by going to the details in task manager. We have athena.exe. All right, let's go back to mythic, go to callbacks and we can see we have a callback there. Nice. So we can interact with the callback, but now comes the first question. We can't really do much because we don't have an internal shell. We don't have. in a simple .NET shell code, uh, uh, a reverse shell, and execute that as assembly. Because everything that you run from here is, I believe, run from memory. So you should have no problem into executing such stuff. So the reverse shell I used was that one. That one. I'm going to have that linked into the description of the video so you can check that too and i already compiled that to save time into my op directory so if i go here we can see that console.exe is that show uh, is that the reverse shell compiled as a windows x64 release right now we can ship that as well so i'm gonna do sudo cp console app one into downloads or actually, I'm not, I'm not needed to ship that. I need to invoke it using Mythic. Yeah, I apologize for that. So I can do execute assembly. Now, instead of Rubius, 
I'm gonna specify that console app one without specifying any arguments. Then here I'm gonna cast an NC listener like that. Now let's touch that. Wait five seconds again. And we have a shell. So we can confirm that this thing is working. And that way I was able to get around the issue of not able to engage with commands and some interactiveness with the box. Now let's move into a test 3, which is if that thing evades Defender. In order for me to test that, I want to remove everything here and delete the beacon. So you know, I'm going to exit that. Now I'm going to remove everything from here. I'm going to start the Windows Defender and do the process all over again. Right. So Defender is on and I'm downloading Athena.zip. Now, first thing, Edge is not blocking me from downloading that, so which is nice. I'm gonna extract that here. And nothing flashed so far. So I'm gonna do scan with Microsoft Defender and zero threats found, which is perfect so far. Maybe that's been possible because of our limited shell functionality. Maybe if we did have shell or PowerShell embedded thing there maybe this would get called by the defender but now it's not M maybe that's the reason so let me just make sure that all of my beacons have been dead and they are so i'm gonna do hide callback and let's go here and execute that once again run that and test 3 is completed it bypasses defender without any kind of problems now let's directly jump on into the fourth test which is is that thing behaves as it should be when Defender is being on? Because my my concern is that most of the things we can do from that shell, from that callback, is to engage with assemblies by executing assembly thing. Because we don't have shell, we don't have PowerShell, right? And that thing is actively running things from memory, and the newest antivirus have that kind of protection when something is trying to allocate and run anything from memory, and sometimes they are blocking that process. So let's try that. Let's do execute assembly. Select file, then select console app one. Let me set up my listener once again and task that. Now, let's see, it's been processing no shell so far, which is bad. And we have an error. So, system trading task and tempos made to water program with incorrect format yeah that was the thing i was talking about so maybe that's not gonna happen but i think we have a chance of debugging that if we have the source code of the of the agent because we can see the the whole error message is there and maybe we can figure something out and compile it ourselves which is gonna make the, the job a little bit harder but the end goal is end goal right now let's try with another assembly which has been erroneous so execute assembly instead of console app let's go with sharp collection specify any of these do rubyas.exe task that i'm gonna hide that one one and error again so it turned out it errors in the exact same space. We can see that it errors out at one 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 five in the both cases. So maybe that's gonna be a nice topic for the next video that we're gonna dive into the source code of the agent and try to debug what the hell is going on and how the defender is actually stopping voting from memory. Right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Outro now. As an overall feedback, I am not completely fine with that agent because. For, at first it got nice results at evading defender but at the end we couldn't really do much because our main interaction point with that agent is being able to load assembly and compile our our own crafting and load them into memory now that thing is obviously getting blocked by defender and with that the agent pretty much become useless so yeah that's my idea the next video we're gonna dive into the source code of that agent and we can see if we can make the things better so I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one.